Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe the energy changes taking place when a vehicle brakes. You should then be able to describe the potential dangers of large decelerations. And finally, if you're a higher tier student, then you should be able to estimate the forces involved in the deceleration of road vehicles. In the last video we saw that the stopping distance of a car consists of the thinking distance plus the braking distance. As you can see, if the speed of the car increases, then the braking distance increases a great deal. Remember that any moving object has kinetic energy. We calculate kinetic energy using this equation, and we saw this equation in the topic on energy. The kinetic energy equals half multiplied by the mass multiplied by the velocity squared. And you're not given this in the exam, so you do need to learn it. Now the key fact is that the kinetic energy depends on the velocity squared. So if we double the velocity of the car, the kinetic energy quadruples. So when a car breaks and comes to a stop, all of that kinetic energy is converted into other forms of energy. And we're looking at that in this video. I'm showing you here the brakes of a car. During braking, the brake presses against the wheel. The force of friction now acts between the brake and the wheel. The kinetic energy of the car is now converted to thermal energy in the brakes and this causes the temperature of the brakes to increase. At the same time, the car slows down as it loses kinetic energy. Now the greater the speed, the greater the braking force needed to stop the car in a certain distance. So what this means is that if a car is travelling at high speeds and the driver needs to brake, then they have to apply a very large braking force. A large braking force will cause the car to decelerate rapidly. But at the same time, a large amount of kinetic energy is transferred to thermal energy in the brakes. This can cause the brakes to overheat. It can also cause the driver to lose control of the vehicle. Now I should point out that we've already seen the forces acting during braking in the video on work done. So you might want to go back and watch that again. Okay, foundation tier students can stop watching now, but higher tier students need to continue. Now in the exam you could be asked to estimate the forces involved in the deceleration of vehicles on public roads. We're going to work that out. Imagine a car with a mass of 1000 kilograms is travelling at 30 meters per second on the motorway. They decelerate to leave the motorway and their velocity decreases to zero in 10 seconds. To calculate the force needed we multiply the mass by the acceleration. I should point out that in this case they've decelerated but that won't affect the calculation. So the mass is 1000 kilograms. Their velocity has decreased from 30 meters per second to zero in 10 seconds. This gives us a value of three meters per second squared for their acceleration. Putting these numbers into the calculation gives us a force of 3000 newtons for this deceleration. Remember you'll find plenty of questions on the forces involved during braking in my vision workbook, and you can get that by clicking on the link above. 